This is the situation at Arnhem and Nijmegen at the end of the fifth turn on the second day. If we look over to the far west, there's quite a bit of pressure building up on the first Airborne's western flank, but it's not a particularly strong unit, but they've, they've rolled well and done quite a lot of damage. So they're up against these glider infantry units, which are very poor quality, far worse than the, the rest of the Allied Airborne units. We've got elements of the uh, new uh, Paratroop regiment coming in. I can't think what the yellow one is, or what number it is, but it doesn't particularly matter. There's still a bit of a battle going on in East of it when tr the uh, first airborne are trying to break through this little roadblock there. Pressure's building up in in Nijmegen. Um, 10th SS is is certainly uh, not having it all their own way, to say the very least. Uh, they don't seem to be a particularly strong division. Maybe they'll receive more reinforcements soon. There's, I believe there's some king tigers and things eventually made an appearance in this battle, and they would have come from the 9th SS, which is for a unit that's supposed to be completely wrecked. That's the latest German tank. Oddly enough, it wasn't very effective because uh, it was far too heavy to be operated in the uh, close confines of the streets around Arnhem and East Beck. In terms of what's going on with the 9th SS, they're still holding the bridge. They've got a lot of improved positions and quite a lot of units dotted around here. There's some flat batteries covering the road bridge north and south. Now, the 10th SS is also decided to, to leave a unit in this direction which is probably just going to block the Arnhem pontoon area for a start. Um, the only problem with trying to operate 10th SS units uh, north of the Rhine is you get a, a morale penalty for doing that. 10th SS is also in a position to establish the ferry here, the assault ferry. Um, at Paderborn, but they don't need to do that. Um, they're just they're just placing a unit there just in case the situation deteriorates and they need to do. Um, then and the bridge is lost. Then they'll, they've got another way of operating, uh, getting units down to Nijmegen, assuming there's still any more Tenth SS units around. Uh, have a look at it, they must have every single 10th SS unit in Nijmegen or, or even south of Nijmegen at this point. The situation in Nijmegen, there's a lot of gun, heavy guns starting to uh, pound Nijmegen town, but to actually uh, do any serious damage to units in, dug in in these uh, Sit town and city hexes, you really need to roll low, um, preferably a zero. Um, 10th SS uh, is attempting to uh, recapture Malvern Bridge. Um, we've got some heavy Panzer Grenadier units deployed down there, and starting to put a little bit of pressure on the small Allied garrison at that bridgehead. Otherwise, German units are pressing against the Allied perimeter here and they've interdicted the uh, Allied um, drop zones, which is not good. German units are also pressurising the Mook bridge here and trying to dislodge this get Allied garrison, but it's in improved position. It's going to be difficult to dislodge them. There are other Allied units coming in from uh, Grave will probably bolster the position at Malvern or Moot depending on, on how bad it gets. So all in all, apart from artillery bombardments and a few assaults on various um, positions within the, the Nijmegen itself, it's pretty much a static front there. 
there are other German mobile units that can uh, deploy to reinforce these bridgeheads here to make sure the Allies don't catch them when 30 Corps finally appears. Um, so the Allies, it's not looking good for the 82nd. They've not achieved their first day's objective to catch Ni capture Nijmegen Road Bridge and they don't look like they've got even the remotest chance of achieving that. Up north, paradoxically, the first airborne looks like it's got the potential to actually take Arnhem Road Bridge at some point. Um, it just depends whether the 9th SS can get any serious reinforcements into the uh, town of Arnhem. Amazingly enough, uh, this coming turn, the Luftwaffe makes an appearance. They've actually got uh, an, uh, the ability to do a ground attack, which is incredible. And that's really it for what's going on. Uh, Market Garden is uh, unravelling. Uh, it really, as it's always been my opinion, it was an awful operation. With no, no hope of ever succeeding. Yeah. The presence, if the 9th and 10th SS Panzer Divisions hadn't been there, it would have been brilliant. It would have worked. Definitely would have worked. But, uh, nah. The presence of the, these really well armed SS units is, is just creating havoc. And it's, it's creating a situation where the airborne units are gradually just being forced away from their objectives. They're not making any progress. 